Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you've come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad. These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation, the reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true, but let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not part She can of... speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kovliad, you would know better than anyone. 
Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Codliard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Cobliard suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No, it was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. As Ambassador Spock has said, we've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must think. The Federation has done business with the Illidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on Tau? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? It can only be one or the other, not both. If I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation make any other choice? This is an outrage. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. We will take back our mines by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I suppose there is some sense to that. I hope we meet again, Jara Ryder.
Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Commander, I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. The Hotari have suffered enough at the hands of the Elidians. I couldn't agree more. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. Did you have help from someone else? Hotari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state-of-the-art, but the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Hmm. Soothing. Commander Rydeck? I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. I'm glad to hear it. I just hope you're not the only one who feels that way. I apologize for that. These are unusual times, to say the least. Much is changing. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong, instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Elidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Because of what happened in the mines. Is it Galvin they're afraid of? Mm, it's entirely possible. But I don't know for sure. Whatever Galvin is doing in those mines is turning everything upside down. But no one knows exactly what's happening. Is 
Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Of course. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major Sarlet Arminta, Special Attaché, Lydian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But, who am I to say otherwise? You sound skeptical. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm that somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. The energy readings we've seen are off the charts. There's no way they'd be able to somehow harness it. That sort of technology doesn't even exist. I know. I felt the same way. But each person told the same story. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. 
Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that, presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. Well, couldn't we slow boat it out of here at impulse speed? It may come to that, but we don't know how far this warp dead zone extends. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. I'm setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Commander Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Nah, Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder to be a political animal like you, with this new first officer coming aboard. This is far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. <sighs> Problem? I just can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. But on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of... Well... One of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there.
With two points of data, the Resolute and the Pro, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. Is that why you're being so friendly to me? Politics? That would be clever, but I think you give me more credit than the captain does. You're all right, Diaz. And you've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. But I don't know. I'm pretty happy where I am. You must be a glutton for punishment. Lieutenant Commander Chopak has been known to take decades to warm up to people. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Mark. There it is again. I saw it. Seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. Got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. Why would they be doing this? We came here to help these people. And now we're getting hit by some warp killing weapon? Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations. They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. <laughs> 